Mantra one. Aum. The head of the sacrificial horse is the dawn, its eye the sun, its vital force the air, its open mouth the fire called Vaishvanara, and the body of the sacrificial horse is the year. Its back is heaven, its belly the sky, its hoof the earth, its sides the four quarters, its ribs the intermediate quarters, its members the seasons, its joints the months and fortnights, its feet the days and nights, its bones the stars, and its flesh the clouds. Its half-digested food is the sand, its blood vessels the rivers, its liver and spleen the mountains, its hairs the herbs and trees, its forepart is the ascending sun, its hind part the descending sun, its yawning is lightning, its shaking the body is thunder, its making water is raining, and its neighing is voice. The head of the sacrificial horse, that is, one fit for a sacrifice, is the dawn, a period of about three quarters of an hour just before sunrise. The particle vi recalls something well known, here the time of dawn. The similarity is due to the importance of each. The head is the most important part of the body, and so is the dawn of the day. The horse, which is a part of the sacrifice, has to be purified. Hence, its head and other parts of the body are to be looked upon as certain divisions of time, etc., and not vice versa. And it will be raised to the status of prajapati by being meditated upon as such. In other words, the horse will be deified into prajapati if the ideas of time, worlds, and deities be superimposed on it for prajapati comprises these. It is like converting an image, etc., into the Lord Vishnu or any other deity. 
its eye the sun, for it is next to the head, as the sun is next to or rises just after the dawn, and has the sun for its presiding deity, its vital force the air, because as the breath it is of the same nature of air, its open mouth the fire called Vaishvanara. The word Vaishvanara specifies the fire. The mouth is fire, because that is its presiding deity. The body of the sacrificial horse is the year, consisting of twelve or thirteen months. The word Atman here means the body. The year is the body of the divisions of time, and the body is called Atman, as we see it in the Shruti passage, for the Atman trunk is the center of these limbs. Taitariya Aranyaka, 2, 3, 5. The repetition of the phrase of the sacrificial horse is intended to show that it is to be connected with all the terms. Its back is heaven, because both are high. Its belly, the sky, because both are hollow. Its hoof, the earth. Pajasya should be padasya by the usual transmutation of letters, meaning a seat for the foot. Its sides, the four quarters, for they are connected with the quarters. It may be objected that the sides being two and the quarters four in number, the parallel is wrong. The answer to it is that since the head of the horse can be in any direction, its two sides can easily come in contact with all the quarters. So it is all right. Its ribs, the intermediate quarters, such as the southeast. Its members, the seasons. The latter, being parts of the year, are its limbs, which brings out the similarity. Its joints, the months and fortnights, because both connect. The latter connect the parts of the year, as joints do those of the body. Its feet, the days and nights. The plural in the latter indicates that those pertaining to Prajapati, the gods, the manes, and men, are all meant. Pratishta literally means those by which one stands, hence feet. The deity representing time stands on the days and nights, as the horse does on his feet. Its bones, the stars, both being white. Its flesh, the clouds. The word used in the text means the sky. But since this has been spoken of as the belly, here it denotes the clouds which float in it. They are flesh because they shed water as the flesh sheds blood. Its half-digested food in the stomach is the sand because both consist of loose parts. Its blood vessels, the rivers, for both flow. The word in the text, being plural, denotes blood vessels here. Its liver and spleen, the mountains, both being hard and elevated. Yakrit and Kloman are muscles below the heart on the right and left. The latter word, though always used in the plural, denotes a single thing. Its hairs, the herbs and trees, these being small and large plants respectively, should be applied to the short and long hairs according to fitness. Its forepart, from the navel onward, is the ascending, literally rising, sun, up to noon. Its hind part, the descending, literally setting, sun, from noon on. The similarity consists in there being the anterior and posterior parts, respectively, in each case. Its yawning, or stretching, or jerking the limbs is lightning, because one splits the cloud, and the other the mouth. Its shaking the body is thundering, both producing a sound. Its making water is raining, owing to the similarity of moistening, and its neighing is voice or sound. No fancying is needed here. Namaste. So this, at last, is the horse, the dawn horse, the image which is the meditation based on the Ashvamedha sacrifice. And this is a very powerful image. While working on these videos, I was struck, actually, amazed at how it made me feel. 
It's very powerful. And our viewers also report being almost overwhelmed by its potency. So I think we've got something here. <laughs> and this is something that you should practice every day. This will lead to great insight, I promise you. I've already experienced it myself. So what do we have here in this vision of the horse? Well, basically, it's the cosmic time image. Uh, you can see the horse, like, spread over the sky from the dawn, uh, the place where the sun rises in the morning, to the dusk where it disappears at night. And in the middle, there's the sky and the clouds, and at night, the stars. And the word that's translated as stars is actually nakshatra. Nakshatra means the 27 lunar mansions. Now, these are different from the 12 sun signs, uh, like uh, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and like that. But these are the 27 nakshatras, or the periods of time of each day of the moon cycle. So these are very important in Vedic astrology, and they uh, express the power or the energy of the moon at different times. So the moon is the pump that keeps the biosphere going because its gravity acts on water. You often notice that around the full moon you have more energy, Everybody seems more passionate and <laughs> crazy things happen. Well, it's a statistical fact, for example, that there are more hospital emergencies during the full moon than any other time. And there are so many correlations, statistically proven correlations of the full moon with traffic accidents, war. I mean, there's so many things. People go crazy around the full moon because they have too much energy. And since they're not engaged in spiritual life, they try to manifest this energy in different ways, and a lot of it is destructive. But that's their problem. <laughs> it's not the problem of the energy. And what this reminds me of is the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna shows Arjuna his universal form. And Arjuna is like overwhelmed, and he describes it as hundreds and thousands of forms and with blazing eyes and blazing mouths. And, you know, it's scary. It's horrifying. Why? He asks him, well, you know, who are you? What are you? Why is this form so powerful? And the Lord answers, Kalo asmi. I am time, and I have come to engage all people. I am the destroyer of the worlds. See? I am hunger. I am death. And this is exactly Hiranyagarbha, as described in the Upanishads. So this is the personification of Jagrat, consciousness, the external consciousness through the senses, and is typified by hunger and death. Because what happens? The worlds are blazing. Everything is on fire. Everything is being burnt, oxidized, turned to ashes by the force of time. Time is the most powerful force because it leads to the breakdown of all structures. Just the other day, I was reading a, a medical report on this basma, this uh, sacred ash. And they say these are like natural nanoparticles that can speed or facilitate the distribution of medicines throughout the body. 
And so in classic Ayurvedic medicine, oftentimes the bhasma, the, the sacred ash, is mixed with various medicines, which are then either applied to the external body or swallowed and like that. So these ashes, these are nanoparticles. That means the whole structure is broken down completely as far as possible. And so this is the effect of time on everything, <laughs> including our bodies and our minds and even the sun and the earth and everything like that in the universe. This is why it's a little bit scary, but it's scary in a good way because it makes us realize the impermanence of everything and that spiritual culture is really the only way out of the suffering of material existence. We don't want to suffer. We want to enjoy. But because we are identified with this material body, which is temporary, full of faults, huh? nobody is perfect, nothing is perfect in this material world. So to get out of this conundrum, what we have to do is to withdraw from the material energy, the gross material energy, at least to the subtle material energy, and from there realize the spiritual reality, which is based on pure consciousness. Now, consciousness is not like matter. It doesn't break down with time. You'll notice, even if you're an old guy like me, <laughs> that your consciousness is still just as fresh and new as it was when you were young. So the consciousness does not wear down because it doesn't actually contact the material energy. It only observes from a distance what is going on in the material world. And actually, this is what we are. Aham Brahmasmi. I am consciousness. I am Brahman. I am pure awareness, awareness of awareness. I know that I am without any instrument of knowledge, even the mind, because I directly perceive consciousness and I am conscious. <laughs> so this is the reality. This is what we want to realize. And it can be realized instantly, if we have the knowledge. So the Upanishads give the Brahma Vidya, the knowledge of consciousness, knowledge of the universal Brahman, which is who we actually are, what we actually are. And when we realize this, we become free from fear. And these meditations on the universal form or the sacrificial horse uh, become a joy, become a source of enthusiasm and enlivenment. And that brings us closer to full absorption in Brahman and full relief from all suffering due to material contact. This is enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.